Good morning. Hello, Ramona. I can't shake the simplest feeling beyond the ghost. We stand on the opposite shore. Hello, Ramona. I reach through. It is time for a bit of a tan. I love this tan. This tan is my go-to. I've been using it forever. It's the Loving Tan in the color dark, which is honestly a little bit dark for me, especially if I don't wash off the guy color, but still love it. It's my ride or die. I love the undertone. It does make you look orange. So if you prefer a greener tan, then it's probably the Bondi Sense is better, but I like this one. When it comes to tanning, it's all in the preparation. So it's all in what you do the day before. So the day before I have my everything shower. I exfoliate, I shave, I moisturize, I am squeaky clean and hydrated. And then the next day what I like to do is just shower, don't exfoliate, don't shave, don't moisturize after and then we're going to apply our tan. I feel if I'm too moisturized, it doesn't really stick. And if I exfoliate before, it tends to go into my pores and leave all these like little dots, which is not a vibe. So that's what we're doing today. And then the first step is to make sure that you apply a little bit of moisturizer to the dry spots in your body. If you have any, so elbows, knees, ankles, stuff like that, apply just a tiny layer and then we're going in with the tan before and I'll show you the after. And then for my face, I like mixing a day cream with these cholesterol drops. So I don't actually use the fake tan on my face. It gets really patchy. This leaves a more subtle finish. Love this one, doesn't smell. Packaging is so annoying because the gold flakes, like they get everywhere. But just mix a couple of drops with your day cream, apply it and you'll have a beautifully tanned face as well. It is a glute focused leg session today. So we're starting with a warm up on the Stairmaster. Just a couple of minutes, get some blood flowing, get the joints nice and warm, get our head in the game, and then we're moving on to some exercises. First exercise of today is a step up. I'm doing it in the cable and I'm using a bench to elevate myself. With the step up, make sure that you use your working leg. So the one that is actually elevated to initiate the movement, to do everything. Back leg, it's just mainly to support with balance, but I'm not actually pushing off the floor with my back leg. Next exercise that we're doing is the dumbbell RDL. Honestly, I really miss the Smith machine. So this gym doesn't have a Smith machine, which obviously is fine, like you work with what you have, but often the Smith machine gets a bad rep, but I love the Smith machine. There is no other machine that makes me just feel my muscles working like the Smith machine does, whether it is on a sumo stand squat or an RDL, like I just, 
this is a moment to appreciate the Smith machine. But honestly, I really appreciate dumbbells too because the thing with dumbbells is you're not forced in a specific bar path. So with dumbbells, what I like to do is I kind of hold them a little bit to the side, a little bit curled outwards, I guess. And with the bar, obviously you cannot do it. So with the Smith machine or with the barbell, like you're stuck there. It's in the same line because you can't bend the barbell, or at least I cannot bend the barbell. With the dumbbells, you can do whatever you want. Like you can hold them anywhere. So I do really appreciate the dumbbells. However, the Smith machine, it's almost like you can use like a hook grip and just let the weight move itself. And all you have to do is like control it with your hamstrings and glutes. I don't know. It's just, it feels really great, but I don't have a Smith machine here. So we're doing the dumbbell RDL. I'm going to do a kettlebell glute bridge next. So I haven't trained my glutes in two days, but I did move yesterday. So I did carry a lot of weights and therefore my glutes are a little bit sore. So I'm keeping it relatively light, the glute bridge today. And instead of using a barbell and plates, I'm just using this kettlebell. If I can lift it up. <laughs> oh, yes, got it. Okay. Moving on to an isolation exercise for the glutes. This is a seated hip abduction. Gail taught me with this exercise, if you remember from my training sessions in Spain, that if you hold this movement at the top for like one or two seconds, it really, really feels like your muscles are like in there and every single fiber is just firing up. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm doing 10 to 12 reps since it's an isolation exercise. So a little bit higher in the rep range. So as I go to the top of the movement, which is right here for me, I hold it for one to two seconds because I don't want to just like go through it, like using momentum and just like flaring it up and like almost catching the weight when it goes back. I want to control it. So I am holding it here for one or two seconds and then I'm slowly, slowly fighting the resistance and then I go back up again. I also don't really go all the way back and put the weight down. I kind of keep it hoovering above to make sure that I maintain that tension on my glutes. So one or two seconds, slowly lowering the weight. Feel that stretch in the glutes and then going back up again. Final exercise for today is an isolation exercise for the hamstrings, the seated hamstring curl. I'm going to do four by four by four. Let me do the math real quick. Four by four by four reps. So I'm starting off pretty high with a high weight and I do four reps, I lower the weight, I do four reps, I lower the weight and then I do four reps. One more. Hold it. Four more reps. So control the weight and then squeeze your hamstrings. Hold it for one second. And then control the weight back. Don't go all the way back. So once you feel that maximum stretch in your hamstring, you return. I can do a few more. already feel it in my hamstrings and in my glutes so I'm going to stretch it out and then I'll see you probably while I'm making some food. It is time to make lunch and we're going to start with making some tortillas and there is something that I really wanted to ask you. 
So I had this idea, I've been thinking. Change of scenery, it is the next day, but I was going through the footage and I saw that this clip was both overexposed and not in focus. So it was it was difficult to watch. So I was like, I'll refilm it. But this is basically where I explained my idea and my question, which is why I, I was like, I need to include it, okay? Otherwise the, it doesn't make sense. This is my idea. I grew up in 1994. I was born in 1994. I grew up in the 90s. I remember looking at the television, America's Next Top Model was on, diet culture and body shaming was so normalized back then. Like it was, you would pick up a tabloid and the titles and stuff, it was insane thinking back how people like were talking about each other and what was okay to say on television. And honestly, I don't know if it's still the same now because I don't consume any traditional media, but I can only hope that it, it is at least to the same extent as it was back then. Because it was, it was crazy to think back at it. I always had this idea that it was preferred as a female to be basically as thin as possible, to not have any muscle, like just to be very, very petite and tiny. Okay. And that's just from the traditional media, not even in my environment necessarily, but just from what I was indirectly consuming. Saying that I am against wanting to lose fat or wanting to decrease your body fat percentage because I've shared my cutting journey and I've shared my 30 days of fat loss. It's just that I like to share things to hopefully help people to be able to do or achieve goals in a healthy way without making them feel like it is the only goal that is okay to have. So for me being in a position where I have a platform that is in the fitness industry, I was thinking, how fun would it be for me to show my bulking journey again, to start a new bulking journey in the first week of April, and then basically share everything, my experience, what I'm doing, how I'm feeling, and hopefully maybe inspire someone, or maybe there is a young girl out there watching who I once was before, and just basically letting her know that it's okay to have different goals it's okay to gain weight it's you don't have to be as thin as possible like i don't know i just i just thought that it would be fun to share it and then really take you on this journey with me the reason why i'm saying april 1st or not april 1st the first week of april is because i received a very very exciting call that i'll be getting a delivery during the first week of april so that's why i'm thinking I could start it then because I'll be in the opportunity to very easily take you along with me on this journey. And I'm not explaining why exactly, you'll see during the first week of April, but basically it will be just very easy for me to now really take you along this journey. My question is, would it be something that you would be interested in me sharing? Not that I probably shouldn't even ask this, right? Because I was talking to a friend the other day and she shared a podcast with me from a really creative guy and he his reasoning is that whenever you create art or share content whatever you want to call it you should treat it as a diary entry and you should not be attached to the outcome because the outcome is out of your control so whenever i create something i shouldn't be thinking of how people would perceive it because i cannot influence how people would perceive it that would be the ideal world but I'm still learning and I'm still growing. And social media obviously is very attached to metrics. Like you'll see views, you'll see what performs well, what doesn't perform well. And I'm not immune to it because obviously I want my stuff to be liked by people. As I said, I don't want to waste your time. I want you to enjoy what you're watching and hopefully learn something from it, right? So I know that I shouldn't ask this, but I'm still asking because I'm still, you know, learning and growing and and. To be honest, I would love to share it if you would want to see it. And if you're like, no, I don't care about you gaining weight or building muscle, like whatever. I just want to continue seeing what you're sharing now, then that's totally fine too. And then I can just not start that journey. You know what I mean? Or not share everything. I don't know. Just let me know if it's something that you would be interested in watching. And if it's something that you think would hopefully share a positive movement on social. Let me know. That was me from the future. Let's get back to me from the past and continue cooking. I'm getting 480 grams of flour. 
I think that's almost everything, but I want to save some to use as dry flour. So I'm just using like 460 grams of flour. I'm going to add in some salt, some baking powder, and then I'm using this one to get everything mixed up. I think we have the right consistency now. I had to do a bit of tweaking with adding more flour, adding more water, but I think we got there. So now I'm going to take it out, divide it into maybe five portions, let's see, and then let it rest for a bit. These are resting now for preferably at least 30 minutes, but the one that I'm going to eat will not be resting for 30 minutes because I'm now going to make my tuna salad and then I'll just prepare the wrap after. But the other ones, I am using them for dinner and I'm going to make burritos, so hence the different sizes. But I want to have a large one for lunch because I'm making a wrap. But I'm just going to let these rest, let them chill for a bit and then I'm going to make the tuna salad. Amazing. The tuna salad is finished. So what I did is I added chickpeas, avocado, tuna, a quarter of a red onion, and then I added some celery, some dill, a little bit of salt and pepper, chili pepper, and then I also added a bit of mayo because I felt like I used the avocado to get that, like instead of the mayo, to get that creamy texture. It adds a lot of flavor to the avocado, but I felt like it was missing some freshness. So that's what I added. And then I also added a bit of lemon juice and it is 10 out of 10. So this is, this is done. I'm going to put it in the fridge real quick and then I'm going to finish making the tortilla. Okay, so let's see. How cute. As you are rolling them out, try to make them as thin as paper and use as little flour as possible. Because if you don't make them as thin as paper, you'll get those like thicker pancakes. But that's not what we want, because we want to get those wraps. Which is why you should make your portions actually like, approximately this size, because these are already like quite big. Because you'll extend them and then it don't fit the, the pan anymore. I'm done. There's flour everywhere. It's a mess. So I skipped some steps, but we are done and it's looking amazing. So this is how you get the final result. So we have the wraps. We added the tuna. I also added some fresh romaine lettuce for a bit of crunch, but now the actual showstopper some crisps. If you make something with tuna, you need to counterbalance the softness from the tuna. There's no better way to do it than by adding some crisps. So that's what I did. So I'll show you what it looks like. Ignore the wrap that I still need to bake. It's a mess. I'm not showing you. This is lunch. A wrap with tuna and crisps. Really only one way to end this and that's by doing a crunch test. Now I'm not showing my face because I have food everywhere because I already ate one, but just hear the crunch, okay? Let's get unready together because I really have been focusing on taking my makeup off at the end of the day. To be fair, I always like cleanse my face before going to bed, but ever since I stopped taking birth control, I do notice that my skin has been breaking out a little bit more, which is probably hormonal, but 
I really try to make sure that I double cleanse now every evening. So I start off with an oil-based cleanser just to get all the makeup off. And then I do another cleanser to really cleanse my pores. And I saw online that you have to work the product into your skin for at least 60 seconds in order for it to actually work. So that's something that I really have been trying to do as well because previously I used to just like kind of rush through the entire process. But as I said, my skin has been breaking out a little bit more. Like not significantly, I just have a little bit more texture and I, I definitely notice where I'm at in my cycle. So I've just been trying to, to focus on cleansing it properly. Now I'm going in with an actual cleanser and I like to keep my skin damp. I'm just going to apply a little bit of skincare. But I basically stopped taking birth control, I think it was in October, so a couple of months ago. And obviously I was kind of like, I guess iffy about it because I've been on birth control for so long. When I was 15 or so, you were just, it was like really normal to just go to your GP and say that you experienced a really painful period, which I did. And then you would just be prescribed the birth control pill. And that is just something that I took since then. And I did switch to a, I think it's called an IUD for like a couple of years, just because I thought it was more convenient. But then I switched back to the pill again and I've just been on it like ever since. So when it was like September, October, and I was reflecting on being on birth control for over a decade, I was like, I really don't want to start my thirties being on birth control, I don't know, it just didn't feel right to me anymore. So I decided to just stop it and stop taking it, which obviously like talk to your GP, this is not advice or anything, but I just stopped taking it cold turkey. I did do some seed cycling in order to hopefully like kickstart my cycle. Cause obviously I wasn't sure like if I had a cycle, what my cycle would be like, if it was consistent, like I had no idea. So I started seed cycling which is basically where you take like a couple of seeds during a specific time of your cycle. And then I think it's like sesame and pumpkin. And then the other two is like, I don't know, I stopped doing it. <laughs> the reason why I stopped doing it is because I was really lucky and my period has been consistent ever since. So I stopped taking the pill, I stopped birth control. And then I just like after a couple of weeks, like whatever it is, like three, I got my period and it's been consistent ever since, which is really honestly very, very nice. I really, really very grateful for it. And I'm very happy because I know that there are people who obviously like struggle with it, with getting it back if they even get it back. And, and I mean, it's just been really, I feel really blessed that I was able to, to just get it back and not have to worry about it anymore. But I do notice now that there are definitely phases in my cycle where I feel like stronger, more sluggish, uh, more tired, more energized. And I also noticed, because I used to always kind of pride myself in being a very emotionally stable person. Like usually I'm, I have like a really calm energy and I, I'm just like stable. I am still stable, <laughs> but it was also definitely the pill that was, I guess, helping with it, right? Because now I do feel that there are specific times during the month where I am just a little bit more angry, a little bit quicker, <laughs> which is not for me. So there are definitely some changes, but I just feel like I'm in this phase now in my life. I'm entering my 30s. I just embrace my feminine side. It's okay to go through phases. It's okay to feel more emotional or more angry or whatever it is. Like I am a female and I'm allowed to go through those experiences and I don't, it's okay, it's okay. I, I used to hate, for example, getting my period because it was just an inconvenience to me, which is why I always have been taking the pill. And I just like, I never really got my period. I just like always took it, whatever. And now I just embrace getting my period and I'm just, obviously it's still annoying, but it's like something that is, it's part of being a female and it's it's actually really nice and I, I really appreciate it. So I don't know, it's just good to know that it's okay 
to embrace that feminine side a little bit more. And also if you have been thinking about quitting the pill or birth control or anything, and you're a little bit scared because you hear all those like horror stories where people don't get their period for like years and stuff, it can also go the other way where you stop it and then you are on a regular cycle and it can be a really good and pleasant experience. So all that I wanted to share about my birth control and skincare experience. Also forgot to end the vlog, so thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you want to see my gaining weight, bulking journey, building muscle. We love building the glutes over here. So let me know if you want to see it and then I'll hopefully see you in my next video. Bye guys. <laughs>